Hi, I'm Rosebells 1984. Welcome to my Liquid Story Binder Tutorials. This tutorial pertains to setting up your general environment within the Liquid Story Binder program. Some of these aspects may be more aesthetic than others, but there are some practical tools to help you make the transition to the program, especially if you've used other programs to write or plan your work. The following topics will be covered in this tutorial. Setting up your aesthetic environment such as customizing your wallpaper, splash screen, and overall color display. Learning how to import items within the program such as chapters, images, and notes. And finally, you can create workspaces so that you are able to switch functionally between different groups of files. Changing your environment within Liquid Story Binder is as simple as working your way around the Display Preferences menu. You can place a wallpaper, change the splash image that displays with the start of the program, and manipulate the color scheme within the program. I know that some of these features may not be the first thing you want to manipulate in the program, but it does help promote an easy and customized environment to work within. Let's first cover the wallpaper and splash screen since they are the easiest to cover. To change your wallpaper, you would go to the display menu, go to the wallpaper tab, and choose change wallpaper. From there, you can choose from any measure of files to change your wallpaper to. To change the splash screen, just go to the display menu again, arrow over to the splash screen, and choose change splash screen. You can choose from any of your images that you wish to import into the program to change the splash screen as needed. And Liquid Story Binder automatically updates with a new version of the splash screen. Changing color scheme can be as simple as choosing from the pre-create templates that can be found in the display menu, or you can customize it on your own. Let's take a moment to show you how you can customize the very displays in your binder environment. Note one thing about the display preferences when it comes to the color scheme. When you go to the display menu and choose display preferences, this will customize your environment within the chapter mode or any other text editing mode that you may encounter in the program. So when I change the background document cover color, I choose select a color. And when I choose the font, which I will change to black, and select font, this will change what my environment will look like within the chapter mode or any other text editing mode within the program. When I click finish, it automatically updates like so. Now, when I go back to the display menu and choose any one of the color schemes, it affects the display environment of the planner feature and also the builder feature among a number of other different modes within the program. If you want to create your own display environment with respect to the windows not the chapter environment just go to the display menu choose color scheme and you can choose your own custom colors with respect to each of the items that you see here. You can find the import prompt by going to the library menu inside your binder, choosing the import documents tab, and you have the option of importing chapters, notes, images, audio files, and additional resources pertinent to your binder or your story in general. When you click on an item file to import, 
let's say for example a chapter it brings up a screen where you can choose the destination of where your file is located and a list of files that are applicable for you to import simply click on the desired file and choose import selected documents Liquid Story Binder will confirm the document or documents you choose to import. If you want to import more than one file at a time, simply use the control key and click on how many files you want. And it's the same process. Workspaces allow you to create custom groups of files to access at a given time and easily switch between them to minimize cluttering your environment with many different windows. I personally use them constantly to keep certain windows available in a distinct set. I've shown you them in brief, but let's put them into practical application. Let's create a workspace for chapters 1 and 2 within this file. Note that you don't have to use this method to start working in your binder, but it is helpful to start. As you can see in the current window, I have my planner with my table of contents highlighted with chapter 1. I have an outline for chapter 1 and I also have my chapter 1 in chapter mode. To create a workspace, just go to the workspaces menu and save workspace. You can custom title your workspace. For this um, example I will name it chapter 1 workspace. When I click OK it automatically saves all of the windows in their current positions and current um, orientations. For my Chapter 2 workspace, you may notice a few differences. Unlike the Chapter 1 workspace, I have a note currently saying that I need to create an outline of some at some point within this particular workspace. I would just do the same thing that I did with the last workspace, save it, click OK, and it automatically updates within this format. Now if I want to switch back to the Chapter 1 workspace, I can just go to the Workspaces menu, go to the Chapter 1 workspace, and it automatically shows up. And I can toggle between the two of them however I would like. That's all for this tutorial. I'm RoseBells1984 and I'll see you next video when we discuss writing and planning within the program. Thanks for watching.